Hey lovelies, so a few weeks ago I shared what I like to think was an absolutely game-changing recipe for this awesome melt-in-your-mouth slow cooker salsa verde chicken. Yes, it totally blew my mind. And since then, you guys have been asking for more and more slow cooker recipes. As always, your wish is my command, so today I've got three new delicious ways to get your slow cooker on. And the best part is, you can just pop all the ingredients in and let the slow cooker do the work. What is not to love? Now, this recipe is going to be a total game changer for your taste buds. We are making some slow cooker Korean inspired beef. And it starts with this really incredible sauce that all gets mixed up in your food processor. The super secret but super amazing ingredient that makes this so yummy is actually Asian pears. Now, what the pear does is it does add some flavor, but it helps to tenderize the beef. And the combination of the pear and the slow cooking is going to make for such incredibly tender beef. You guys are not not going to believe it. And to that, I'm going to add some soy sauce. I've got some brown sugar, so we've got a nice salty sweet thing happening here. I'm also going to be adding a good helping of chili garlic sauce, a nice splash of sesame oil, and a couple cloves of garlic. I've also got some ginger headed in here, and I'm just going to pop the lid on my food processor and let it blend away until this mixture is nice and smooth. Once you've got your yummy sauce created, it is time to turn our attention to our beef. Today I'm using some sirloin steak that's been really thinly sliced. You can pretty much use any cut of beef you want to in this recipe, but the sirloin happened to be on sale, so that's what we're using. And I'm just going to get my sirloin into the bowl of my slow cooker and then top it with that amazingly flavorful sauce. I know guys, it really is that simple. I'm going to put the lid on my slow cooker and then let this cook away. You have the option to cook it on high for say three to four hours or low and slow for six to eight hours. I recommend the low and slow method. The longer this cooks, the more and more tender your beef is gonna be. Now for my last step, I like to go in with two forks and use them to shred my beef into little pieces. Then they're sort of in there with all of that sauce. They're really, really nice to eat this way. I just like to garnish this up with some thinly sliced green onion and a little sprinkle of sesame seeds. And oh my gosh, guys, you have a total winner on your hands. I like serving this simply with just a little bit of rice to sop up all of that extra saucy goodness. Oh yeah, Korean beef for the win. Next guys, we're whipping up some amazing chicken tinga and we're going to be doing it right in the bowl of our slow cooker so everything's going to get extra delicious. Now, if you've never had chicken tinga, it's a Mexican inspired chicken. It is super good. You shred it up and then you can put it on burrito bowls, burritos, tacos. That's how I love it served. Now, I'm going to be doing this entire thing in my slow cooker, but if you do have a chance to saute your onion and your garlic first before you add it to the slow cooker, I'll just say that's how you get the best flavor. So I'm going to start by getting my onion into the bowl of my slow cooker. To that onion, I'm going to be adding a good helping of garlic. You guys know how I feel about garlic by now, don't you? And I'm also going to be adding some chipotle pepper. So this is really the secret to great chicken tinga. What I love about them is while they have a little bit of heat, their signature flavor is this unbelievable smokiness that makes them super tasty. Next, I'm going to add some crushed tomatoes. You can buy these canned at your supermarket. We'll just get them right into the bowl of our slow cooker. And then I'm also going to be adding some chicken broth. This is just gonna help thin everything out a little bit. For even more great flavor, we've got some ground cumin headed in here, as well as some dried oregano, and of course, some salt and pepper, because where would we be in the world without salt and pepper? I'll give that a quick stir, and once that mixture is combined, I'm going to go ahead and get my chicken into the slow cooker. Now, you could always do this with chicken breasts if you wanted to, but today, I'm using boneless, skinless chicken thighs, because as you probably know by now, I find them a whole lot more flavorful. We're going to get the lid on our slow cooker and cook it either on high for three to four hours, or low and slow for six to eight hours. And you'll see when you go in to shred it up with your forks, it literally just falls apart. And that is exactly what you're looking for. Once you've got your chicken tinga shredded up, you can pile it on top of some tortillas like I'm doing here. I like topping it with just some finely sliced red onion, a little bit of cotilla cheese, and some cilantro for good measure. Guys, this is smoky, spicy deliciousness at its finest. And the best part is it makes amazing leftovers. 
Finally today, for all you vegetarians out there, I am making a bit of a tasty twist on a classic Indian dish called aloo gobi, which is basically curried cauliflower and potatoes. But today I'm going to be adding some chickpeas to it for a little added fiber and some protein. Now I'm going to get started once again with my slow cooker and to that I'm going to add just a bit of vegetable broth. This is going to help add some moisture and help us cook up our cauliflower and our potatoes. Next, I've got one large tomato headed in here that I've just diced up. And then I'm going to add the trifecta of flavors when it comes to Indian cooking. Some onion, some garlic, and some ginger. Next, it is time to get our spice on. And first up is going to be the classic Indian spice blend, garam masala. So a lot of people don't realize garam masala is actually a blend of all sorts of different tasty spices that come together to make something insanely flavorful. I'm gonna get my garam masala into my slow cooker with some ground turmeric, a little bit of ground coriander, and some whole cumin seeds. If you can only find ground cumin, that's totally fine here. But the whole cumin seeds are pretty classic in traditional Indian cooking. Once you've got all that great spice in the bowl of your slow cooker, you wanna give that all a good mix so it's well combined. Then you can pile in your potatoes. I'm using russets here that I've peeled and diced. I've also got one full head of cauliflower going in here that I've cut into florets. And finally, I'm going to add one can of chickpeas that I have rinsed and drained. I'll give that one more good mix for good measure. Then I'm going to pop the lid on my slow cooker and let this cook away until those potatoes and that cauliflower are nice and tender and almost falling apart. You guys won't believe how flavorful this is. I like serving it up with some freshly chopped cilantro and a side of basmati rice. I hope you will give all three of today's amazing recipes a try. If you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo because you guys know how much I love seeing your kitchen creations. Remember, all three of these recipes are being featured on our awesome meal planning site, healthymealplans.com, where you can browse thousands of recipes, create your meal plan for the week by just dragging and dropping, and then simply click to print out your grocery list and take it straight to the supermarket. If you haven't checked it out yet, I really hope you will. And finally, guys, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.